And so this is about um, the accusation that doctors were intimidated or even lost their jobs uh, because they were trying to advocate for more services for their, their patients. And the time period they're really looking at is um, uh, sort of the mid-2000s. Um, and this is no surprise to me. Um, when they first started to cut back on health in the mid-90s, and I was elected in 97, and for the first um, three or four years I was in office, I could personally phone up and advocate for a constituent, and I did. And we were always successful. Um, in getting them moved up the list or faster service or whatever. And then all of a sudden, in about 2001 or 2002, it just stopped. And we couldn't get them moved up the list. The people in the health wouldn't talk to us. And so I, I had it out with one of them one day and they just said, sorry, but yeah, your person is sick and yeah, they need to be moved up the list, but frankly, the 20 people in front of them are just as sick and that's that. We're not doing this anymore. Okay, so the controversy that has come up recently is that uh, some doctors who were very good at what they did, and this centers around lung cancer and treatment of people with uh, lung cancer, were basically drummed out of Alberta, drummed out of their jobs because they were complaining or talking publicly about a lack of resourcing in, in their area. And, um, a number of us, not government members, felt that there should have been a public inquiry. Now, public inquiry has certain things that go with it. You, it, it ha it's quasi-judicial, so it's like a court, but not a court. But you can subpoena witnesses, so you can say, you must come. Even if you don't want to, you have to. A subpoena, a subpoena is a legal requirement, and you have to come, and you have to talk to us, right? So subpoenaing people, there's a, that ability. Um, generally, it's headed up by a judge or by a very well-respected person that has some experience in this sort of thing. Um, it, uh, it can um, you know, swear people under oath to tell the truth. There's just certain things it can do that uh, you don't get in other types of, uh, of questioning. The government didn't want to do that. So we have a group called the Health Quality Council that was already in existence and they tasked the Health Quality Council with looking into whether or not this allegation of doctors being intimidated was true. And we've now had the first report was released the day after the, um, the arena announcement that came in the, in the, in the night. Was it yesterday or the day before? The day before. This has been a busy week. Um, <coughs> And indeed, what they are finding is that, yes, doctors were intimidated. They were, they lost their um, uh, privileges at the hospital. They, you know, had uh, their practice limited. They were not allowed to participate in certain things. They got cut off of committees. It, yeah, <laughs> it's turning out to be true. They were intimidated. Some of them lost so much that they left the province in order to start another practice somewhere else. Now there's two key doctors that you hear talked about. Um, I'm trying to remember their names and I'm not going to... Uh, McNamara and um, it's the second one. And those two um, really got... It looks like they really got beaten up and it looks like they... Um, they tried to sue the government, and there was some kind of a settlement, and they are under a gag order. So they will not come um, at, before the Health Quality Council because it cannot guarantee them protection. No whistleblower protection, but a public inquiry could have protected them because it, it can insist that they speak, right? So therefore protection is given. So we haven't gotten to the bottom of their particular stories, but from the but the, the but the interim report is saying yes, there was intimidation. Yes, it affected doctors, and it seems to have been when they were advocating for their patients. So it's serious. Um, 
I think it's very serious, actually. I think if we had a public inquiry, it would, um, it would, it would tie up a lot of time and a lot of nasty stuff would come out of it. Who did the intimidating? Who did the intimidating? Good question. Um, it looks like it came out of the minister's office mostly. The minister of health's office but also through the Regional Health Authority, which at that time would have been Capital Health. Um, but yeah, people received phone calls to say, don't say that again, or you'll be in trouble. Um, so it was high, highly placed individuals in one of those two agencies that would do this. Um, so it's, it's serious. Uh, and of course the question is always, well that was then, this is now, is it still going on? Do we still need to worry about it? And I would say that they will have stopped part of it, but I bet you money some of it's still going on. I just, that kind of deep-rooted um, influence and intimidation doesn't go away overnight. They'll be, they're still doing it somewhere in there, which is why people want the public inquiry. She's asking if the College of Physicians and Surgeons have a say in this. Good question. Um, the way uh, occupations work in Alberta is any occupation that is going to be recognized as a professional occupation, including all of the health professions, um, come under uh, the ministry that's responsible for professions and occupations. In the health sector, they are all expected to set up two organizations. A college, which is to determine professional standards, um, training requirements, and lifelong learning. So, uh, you know, after a certain period of time, you're going to have to come back and be tested or be subjected to a peer review. Any complaints against the people in that profession go through the college so they have a a tribunal to hear complaints and to make decisions. Um, so the College of Physicians and Surgeons is that body for the doctors. And I think they would be considered an interested party in this, but they, um, they did not bring forward the original complaints. But they're definitely on the side here because it affects their members, basically. And then the association, which is the second piece, is the AMA, the Alberta Medical Association, which is the um, representatives of the individuals, and usually the bargaining uh, group uh, for wages and amounts of pay. So we have not seen the end of this one. Gee, isn't it fun, all these, <laughs> these scandals to keep us going until Christmas?